Good to go. Okay. Uh, thank you, Mike. And today is the, this is the OPEB meeting for the town of Weathersfield. Uh, I believe we have the, are these quarterly, Mike? Yes. These meetings, OPEB, pension and firefighters. Uh, they are the first Monday of February, May, August, and November. Gotcha. Okay. Well, I'll, I can call this meeting to order and, um, uh, you know, I, I think, Mike, you've got probably the information you've supplied it to everybody who's on this Zoom. I'm just reviewing it now, taking a look at it. Yes. And, um, yes, if you've got anything you would like to share, please do. Oh, do you want me to put the, Chris, do you want me to put the uh, report up? I can put the whole package up. Yeah, fi fine, Michael, by me, if that makes sense for people. Right. Let me. While we're doing the minutes, I'll get that. I'll get okay. That oh, and yeah, we did not meet in February because of a quorum issue. Yeah, so well, those meet minutes are going back to November. November, okay. I see them on here. Okay. Uh, I'll put a motion to approve the November 2nd, 2020 minutes. I'll make that motion. Can I get a second? I'll second that. Motion by Michael O'Neill, Michael Emmett second. All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 I don't know if I can vote, I wasn't there. I'll note the abstention, Tom. Okay. Uh, minutes are adopted. Okay. And Chris, you're on, so report, uh, and then do you have the, you can share it, Mike? I'm coming. I'm, uh, okay. <laughs> I got three packages that look similar. I know. They're bang, bang, bang. That's what I was doing. I was going through <laughs> and then clicking the packet, and I'm like, uh-oh, there's no Zoom link on the packet, so. Do you want me to look, Michael, as well? Um, people see that okay? We got it. Yep. Perfect. Okay. Well, uh, great. Good. Again, good afternoon, everyone. Good to see folks and, and hear from folks. Um, we'll be quick. I know we've, we've got uh, uh, a short window of time here and I'll just catch up on the, on the highlights. We'll use select pages from what is admittedly a, a, a pretty detailed uh, a, a packet of information. Just very quickly, we had mentioned this to, to Michael and Gary uh, a short while back. We did rebrand our firm, uh, just uh, uh, kind of aligned with our aspirations to, to begin to uh, grow and expand thoughtfully, but, but on a national basis. So um, what you had known for a long period of time as Fiducia Investment Advisors had become DeMeo Schneider for a short period. We are now Fiducia Advisors. Um, absolutely no change to the team to the way that the firm is run, the type of advice we bring, uh, the individuals working on your account, all of that is uh, absolutely identical. Um, again, strictly a rebranding effort. And um, of course, and importantly, thank you again for the, the trust and confidence that you place in us. We work hard to earn it every day. Um, I will hit uh, only the highlights of what's going on. I'm on page four here. You'll see a couple of themes as the new year began. I'd step back and just remind the committee quickly, it's been certainly a year in the capital markets like no other, as we all know. I mean, we're hard pressed to think when we sat here a year ago, kind of at the onset of the pandemic and, and the challenges that it presented, you know, certainly societal, but also just from an economic perspective that we'd be sitting here and seeing the type of numbers that we've had and you'll see momentarily, they have been uh, very robust. Um, and the trust has done very, very well. Uh, and it is a byproduct, at least on the front end of the recovery, you remember back about a year ago, all of the stimulus, both monetary and fiscal that were uh, put into the system. Uh, and clearly investors drew some comfort from that. And more recently, it's kind of been joined by, you know, obviously gains on the distribution front. So those two things have been kind of working as tailwinds and pretty effectively so. Um, to keep investors you know, confident and, and, and markets functioning pretty nicely. Um, 
the American Rescue Plan Act, you see the details in the upper right hand corner of the page, the most recent stimulus out of Washington, a big component of that portion of that is focused on the individual on consumers, as you all well know. Um, that's important, of course, right, because consumers represent about 70% of economic output here in the US. So to the extent there's support being lent to that segment of the economy, it's, 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 it's helpful. Um, a little bit higher ticking inflation and interest rates you see in the lower left hand corner of the page here. Um, right, as the economy continues to transition, hopefully into that next regime, that next cycle of growth in the back half of this year and into 2022 certainly is forecasted, um, things like inflation and interest rates might move a touch higher, and indeed they have, but we don't view them as problematic um, uh, right now. Um, and then the other thing, it's got more nuanced point, but in the lower right-hand corner of the page there, you'll just see across global equity markets, um, an interesting trend Back again about a year ago when the equity markets began to recover, a, a lot of that recovery was centered on the so-called pandemic resistant names, the big tech com companies you may remember did particularly well. Um, but the rest of the markets kind of struggled along a bit sideways. More recently, we have seen a, a pretty noteworthy um, increased breadth, if you will, in terms of returns and things like small companies and value stocks versus growth stocks have all kind of joined the party, if you will. And that's encouraging to us because oftentimes historically, uh, that type of broadening return pattern has been associated with kind of the next uh, uptick, excuse me, in, in economic activity. So if that foreshadowing um, plays out again, uh, hopefully, uh, uh, again, we're in the kind of the front stages of a, of, of a new economic cycle. Uh, I'm going to skip over in the interest of time a lot of this other detail and, uh, and encourage the committee, if you're inclined to look at it at, uh, on your own uh, a time, but we've, I think, hit a lot of the points. Here on this page, uh, page six, you see in summary fashion uh, for various time frames performance across the markets globally. So top third of the page, as you note, there is fixed income middle section of the page of the equity markets and then some of the alternative markets down at the bottom. And really the most striking thing to us on this page, you see here in the one year numbers for equity markets globally, the type of returns I mentioned earlier, 56%, for example, for the S&P. And really, if you work your way all the way down through most of the major categories of investment globally, some pretty hefty returns. Um, and again, that has bled through in terms of performance of the trust, as we'll see in a minute. The fixed income markets, the returns have been positive, but they have been uh, recently negative with higher interest rates. But over the last year, generally positive, but you do see there a much, much more modest clip um, for fixed income returns versus, versus what the equity markets have done. <clears throat> So with that, I think uh, I am gonna skip ahead a lot of this other detail here and cut right to the chase with the portfolio and stop me along the way or certainly redirect me. I'll pause momentarily and, and get your reaction. You see here on, on page uh, 11 of the, um, of the deck, just the allocation profile for the trust assets at the end of March. So you see close to $27 million of invested assets. Um, in place and kind of working on, on the trust behalf. Um, you see kind of a, a cross here, uh, the allocation uh, mix, uh, you'll note in the far right, a little bit of an underweight in fixed income with overweights and equity, right? As I just mentioned a moment ago, equity markets have pretty readily outpaced fixed income. We did take action consistent with the policy statement a few weeks back working with Michael um, and have reallocated uh, the portfolio back closer to those target weights. So we have addressed that. Um, and I think otherwise the portfolio is in pretty good working order. Um, it continues, as you know, to lean into equities, right? 60, 65%, if you, 60%, uh, if you will, in, in, in equity securities by target, uh, and then fixed income for its stability properties. And then we have a little bit, you'll see at the bottom of the exhibit uh, in the form of real assets, um, to lend some diversification uh, and inflation protection to the mix. So um, 
uh, specialty managers, uh, uh, some indexing included for fee economies, uh, otherwise really a diversified portfolio with, with um, uh, good institutional managers. And as we'll see here in, in uh, a nanoseconds time, uh, performance has been pretty darn good. So you'll see on, on page 12 here, I'd turn your attention if you could down two thirds to the bottom of the page, you'll see the trailing performance exhibit. You'll see it was an okay first quarter, right? We talked about interest rates being up and bond prices down and, and equities moved a bit higher. So the, play, the trust was up 2.6%, uh, a touch ahead of the benchmark. And then you see the one year number, um, which again, right, it would have been hard pressed to think a year ago, this is the type of numbers we'd have, but the plan was up, the trust was up 38%. Uh, for the one year period ending in March and, and nicely ahead of the benchmark, we, we tracked the managers against, which was up a little less than 35% um, and kind of riding in line of a longer term, a bit ahead of the benchmark net of those manager fees. So I think we're in pretty good work and, and all the managers uh, back to the previous page are, uh, have the maintain designation from our research group. So I think we're in good working order in terms of uh, both the roster managers the current allocation with the rebalancing we did with Michael a short time ago. And then moreover, our proof statement, right, has been uh, some pretty heady numbers here in terms of performance. Um, so we're pleased with that. Um, with that, I will pause for a minute and, and see what questions the group may have. I'll do this for just a second so we can see folks. Anything from uh, the group in terms of markets, managers, performance? I know, Mike, you've got some follow-up relating to the, uh, oh, no, I'm, I got that confused. I'm thinking of the volunteer firefighters. Check that on the, uh, on the credit. Um, no, I think uh, otherwise that's all, Mr. Mayor, I had in terms of an update for the committee. Okay. All in all, it's actually looking, you know, good from an investment standpoint. I know. As you said, the market recently has been a little bit volatile, but for the last, you know, 12 months, actually since the end of the pan well, not end of the pandemic, but you know, since the uh, dip that occurred shortly after the beginning of the pandemic, things have stabilized and, and in fact have gone up. So Correct. Any questions for Chris or any observations on the investment? No. Thank you. Good. Mike uh, O'Neill, anything else for us before I go back to the agenda? No, that's it, Mayor, on this one. Okay. And this, there. this uh, just so uh, Tom and and just to reiterate for everyone, this portfolio doesn't see a lot of it doesn't see a lot of activity other than the investment activity because we're not um, actively dispersing um, paying bills, paying for medical claims and things out of this. We when we created when we when the council adopted the funding plan in fiscal twelve and the trust was created, it was kind of a uh, we have actually two two accounts. We have the trust account, where which is what we're looking at, and then there's what we call the OPEB reserve account, which when we report the trust, the two are together. But the OPEB reserve is where employee contributions go in and all of that, and that's where the claims get paid from. So you, okay. don't, you don't see all that activity inside of this account that we're looking at. This is sort of strictly the the investment side of the of the trust. Okay. And then again, there's the OPEB <coughs> trust. And then which is the, the, what is the one that gets the funding in and out, the claims? We call it the OPEB reserve. OPEB reserve, okay. Before the trust was created, it was just a, a retiree uh, medical self-insurance fund, basically. Yeah. And so now it sits side by side with the trust, you know, nowhere near as much uh, money flowing through that as, mm -hmm. as you see here. Okay. okay. We're just for kind of, and again, just for background for everyone, um, 
the unfunded liability, we're at about 50% funded, which again is it's great progress. Um, so the total liability is about rough in mid 50s, 54 million say, and we're what, Chris, 26 million as of the end of March. So we're, yep. we're, almost, we're almost 50%. Okay. And then maybe Mike, you would have a better handle as finance director and then what are other municipalities at? Um, or, or maybe Chris, you might know if you handle this for other municipalities, 50% funded, you know, seems pretty good to me, but are, you know, are our neighboring towns greater than that, lower than that? Yeah, no, it's a great question, uh, Mr. Mayor. Your intuition is spot on. I would say that Weathersfield actually has a pretty good head start versus most of your peers in terms of your funded status. Um, you know, this liability, I think, caught a lot of folks a little bit by surprise, right? And, and they're, everyone's kind of playing catch up. <clears throat> the dynamics of the, um, <clears throat> excuse me, the, um, the accounting is such, Michael will know this better than I, but just the formation of the trust gives you some beneficial ways to account for and to discount the liability. So a lot of people have started trusts put very little money in to get those favorable accounting treatments, but really from a funded status perspective or, or you know, just getting started. So at 50%, um, you're at a pretty healthy clip and, and I think compare pretty favorably to most of your peer cities and towns around the state. Yeah, I have, we actually pulled some information through OPM. It's slightly outdated. It's, it looks like it's from fiscal 18, so three years old. Uh, it shows us, I just told you our total liability was 54 million. It shows us at 44. So it's, and it shows us 37% funded. So this, you know, it's three years old, but again, so that's, that's where Weathersfield is. And just of the surrounding communities, the only one that was higher was the uh, Hartford Board of Education actually has a fund that's uh, close to 50% funded. But otherwise I'll, I'll just rattle a few off. Um, and again, compare this to the 37 for Weathersfield at this time. Cromwell, 30%, Newington, 27%, Glastonbury, 23%. And then it really falls off. New Britain, 10%, Bloomfield, 8%. So East Hartford, 8%, Windsor, 4%. State of Connecticut, can there be a negative? <laughs> I can could, I could turn the paper over upside down. <laughs> OK. Great. Any questions uh, for Chris or for Mike O'Neill on this? From either Tom or, uh, I mean, it, it's difficult. If you, you can't just call us to say Mike or Michael. I'm looking at all three of us. Mr. Emmett, Mr. O'Neill, Mr. Rell. <laughs> Nothing else? You guys are good? I'm good, thank you. Another business? Okay. Yep. Can I uh, Most... here just introduce uh, Claudia, Claudia Data for yep. Chris Catchmark? Claudia. I, uh, I met uh, Mr. Emmett already. How are you? And, are you and the mayor and deputy mayor as well. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Michael. Yep. Chris, Claudia is our, uh, our human resources manager. Oh, great. Hi, Claudia. Hi. Hi, Chris. Nice to meet you. Likewise. She's serving as uh, Gary's proxy today, so um, <laughs> which is good. Gary can get back to some non-HR stuff. And That's right. That's right. He needs to do that. Good. Okay. No other business. Uh, motion to adjourn the OPEB meeting for Monday, May 3rd. All those in favor signify by, or actually I got to get a motion. Uh, I'll go move. Second. Made and seconded. All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed nay. Ayes have it. Okay. Thank you. Thank you all. Hey, good afternoon, everyone. Yeah, we'll see you, Mike. Take care. Take care.